Hello, today we're going to do something different. I think I'm going to try some embellishment on a few pores that I thought were okay, but I feel like they need a little something. So I picked some kind of green, blue canvases, and the reason I did that is because they look a little bit like Northern Lights. So I think I'm going to do um, some mountaintop forest embellishments. So I'm going to freehand this. I've never done this before. I mean, I've done embellishments before. I've never done this style before. So uh, wish me luck. <laughs> I'm going to start with uh, black because we're just going to have the silhouette. And I think we'll have the mountain come down like this. Get the sides as well and the mountain doesn't stop at the edge of the painting and there's another mountain over here so the reason i'm using the big brush is because it leaves these little tiny marks that might be vegetation. <clears throat> then I'm going to use um, smaller brushes to make the actual trees. And what I am going to do is that left air bubbles. So I'm going to use the torch to pop the air bubbles because when air bubbles dry, they end up looking horrible. So I think I'm going to start doing some trunks. I'm going to use this little brush. I don't know sizes or anything, but with my big old fingers, you can see that it's a pretty small brush. But we'll do some tree trunks. And they kind of look a little twisty and susy, but that's okay. Forests aren't made to conform to uh, straight lines, you know what I mean? And a lot of times they're just trunks, just tree trunks. And sometimes there are nurse stumps. Big old stumps of trees that have fallen. And what happens is the pine cones and the seeds from these trees will fall into the stumps of these old ancient fallen trees that already have massive root systems. And they're opportunistic, so the seeds will go and try to put down roots. And they'll find that there's a root system already there. So you'll find trees growing out of these old ancient stumps. It's just a really cool machination of nature. I don't know if I'm using that word right. It sounds right. I think there's also one here. There's a tree here. I 
think that tree's bigger. Yeah, thicker, thicker base, thicker trunk that thins toward the top. There we go. This tree, I don't know, doesn't feel quite right to me. Maybe it needs a little, a little sapling next to it. And I think there should be one here too, just right here. Because I tend to believe that trees are social creatures. I'm a bit of a weirdo that way. But it's been shown that trees do communicate through their root systems and through the fungal networks that lie beneath the forest floor. <clears throat> and I think it goes much, much further than that. So the biggest branches are usually going to be the ones about midway up. And then they get smaller toward the top. And then you've got little little roots and I'm going to need a smaller brush. <clears throat> I think this brush is too big but we can get started. And because we're in the mountains, we're not going to have these um, colossal branches that you see at lower elevations. Um, let's see. We're going to have thinner, shorter branches. Because the ground freezes and they're not able to grow out and there's not as much new growth every year um, as there are in lower elevations. So that's why when you see trees in Alaska and other um, places above the timberline that freeze very often, you see um, much thinner trees. You don't see the full cedars like we do here in the Pacific Northwest. Okay. They certainly aren't symmetrical. And another thing about trees and these branches is that the thicker parts tend to be further away from the trunk. So I'm gonna use a different thinner brush. This is the thinnest brush I have. This little, this little brush right here. And these are just cheap little paint brushes I got on Amazon. And with this, we're going to do the tops. And also some of these little branches here. And this one's just going to be all just little, just a little tree.
This one needs more root. little sapling give it some give it some life <laughs> sorry for the sniffles it's very cold out here I need to put a heater out in the garage this is a hot mess <laughs> <laughs> this tree right here that's a hot mess I'm not quite sure what to do about it except to add more branches so this guy doesn't just stand out so we're just gonna we're gonna bulk them up there we go that looks a little better give them some life closer to the ground I'll do some fine lines down here if i can a little better okay so I'm gonna let that one dry and then I'm gonna add some white highlights I think we'll see that's a that's a big old maybe all right well that actually builds up my confidence a little bit I'm gonna do a bigger canvas next so there there's that little northern lights I'll add some snow but I don't want to put the white onto the black because we all know what happens when you mix white and black paint. It turns gray and that's not what we're going for. Not with this anyway. <clears throat> um, the next one I'm going to paint is this one. I'm going to embellish is this one, which was kind of a cool underwatery looking situation but I don't know I'm feeling trees on this one and since it's my painting I will put trees on it if it tells me trees it's gonna get trees it's just gonna get a little bit of trees it's not gonna get the full treatment see what I did there probably not because you have to see it spell it to <laughs> I'm not gonna go ahead and explain that too much because it's a bad joke the full treatment I am a dad joke maestro at times And actually, we are going to go all the way across. But I think after I do the black, I think this one's going to have a lot more snow than black. But this is how we start. And I'm thinking... maybe just like a stump here just like a burned out stump maybe a few of them maybe 
there was a fire here at some point. Never quite grew back. But then there was a survivor. Where did that survivor grow? about right here. Maybe it grew out of one of the stumps. That looks like an obscene gesture, so let's fix that. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong. I do love an obscene gesture in the right time and place. However, that's not the goal of this painting. And I think the survivor grows right off the canvas. And there's some dog hair. handy. Then we're going to go to the fine brush and we'll start with I think this one's a cedar. There are several ways to tell a cedar from a Douglas fir. And since this is my video, I'll tell you a couple of them. One of them is that on a cedar tree, the branches kind of look like the letter C on its side. Not an exact C. Give it some more trunk. They grow up and the, they don't have needles. They've got flat um, I don't even know what you call it. But instead of like a conical um, growth of needles, they've got um, flat flattened greenery. doesn't just grow side to side, it grows out and upwards. Another way is the bark. Cedar bark grows in strips. I'm gonna add a lot more details to this when I'm adding snow. But I'm, I'm okay with this tree, I'm okay with it. 
It's my first try at them, so I'm not, I'm not being too critical. Maybe there are some branches growing out the back. Maybe there's one growing down. Just in case somebody comes along and wants to climb it. And have one close enough to the ground to make it climbable. Yep, you could put a log right here, jump up and climb right up. There we go. That's pretty decent. Let's see. Harriet, get out of there, baby. That's my puppy, Harriet. There. Northern Lights. Achievement unlocked, kind of. Now I have to figure out where to put these to dry. I'm running out of room. There's dog hair on everything. That's okay. <clears throat> now this one I was saving because I actually really like this pour. And I haven't decided yet whether or not to add like a giant sequoia to it. I mean, I kind of have because I really like the idea of just a big old tree going up the, the middle of it. But do I want to mess with it? And I mean, the answer is it's on the table. So I, clearly I'm going to mess with it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm even making a pretense to myself uh, that it's a debate because it's not. Here goes nothing. Okay. We take our thicker brush. We take it right up to the sky. All right, what are you doing, baby? This looks wonky to me. Whoops. Wipe that off. Just a second. <laughs> doesn't work when your fingers are also covered with paint there we go paper towels to the rescue once again that actually looks kind of cool just splitting it down the middle I've also been working on um, resin pours and making some river boards so this kind of looks like one of those so let's do some thicker um, these are thick here Some work with the thinner brush there. Oops. 
also with the thicker brush. <clears throat> okay, before I mess it up any more, well, no, before I mess it up at all, because so far I'm happy with it, get out the thinner brush. So that way, if I make a mistake, it's easier to cover. So here we go. Just going to give it that silhouette look. We're not going to go for hyper realism, which in my old drawings I used to do, but I don't do those so much anymore because my memory doesn't work the way it used to. There we go. I like that top. And then go out here. A lot of times if trees live in windy places, they'll have more branches and more greenery on one side than the other. Because that's literally the way the wind blows. <laughs> But we are going to give this side some some greenery. Isn't it amazing that all of the oxygen that we breathe on this planet comes from plants? And I'm not just talking about these big trees, these majestic... Oh god, I love trees. That's why I hike in them all the time. But all of the air that we breathe comes from plants, be it in the ocean, in the forests, wherever the plants may live, if they can see the light, if they can get light, they're giving us oxygen. So every breath we take is thanks to these guys. and their friends who live in the water. It's raining really good right now. You know, the, the idea of interconnectedness gets kicked around so much these days that you kind of get immune to it. When you look at these trees and you think about how old they are and how long they've been part of this planet, think how time must move for them we're just a blink of the eye to them. No matter how important we think we are, how intensely our lives are lived, how intense our losses are, these guys are constants. And they're talking to each other loud and clear to them not even a dog whistle to us
Hi, Harriet. How's my baby girl? Harriet loves trees. Trees give her all the sticks she wants to play with. And again, because I'm me, we're gonna go ahead and make this tree a little more climbable. <laughs> Harriet, get out of there, baby. That's not for you. Harriet. <laughs> Darn it. Hey, come on, get out of there. You don't need to knock over the tripod. She's like, well, no one needs to knock over the tripod, but if you can, why wouldn't you? <sighs> Puppy logic. Such a good time. There we go. There. And then I will go in and add some white and some highlights at a later time. But that is all I have for you today. Just some trees. There. Northern lights. All right, thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Subscribe if you want to or like it, whatever you want. Take care. Bye.